90s hit maker for festival tribute. Hi, I'm Debbie, producer of Note and Man of Mystery. Dancehall Dynamo Dave Kelly, creator of Showtime, Joyride, and other hit rhythms, set to be honored at Reggae Sum Fest. But will he be there? Rocco! He's one of the first persons that would write about everything that's happening today in the last hour in one song. It's been long gone. 90s dancehall still making party playlists, the decade charting the dominance of DJ music. The rhythms and rhymes of Dave Kelly, a big chunk of that soundtrack. The songwriter and producer playing a central role in the careers of stars such as Butcher Banton and Bounty Killer. But Kelly too busy ducking the limelight and dodging the camera to factor visibly, even in his own story. I mean, you would kind of play sound. I sent me, you know, look on the record and see them say, Madhouse. I mean, it's just a D, Kelly. Growing up and getting more familiar with sounds and, and production, I realized, say, yo, the, the sound of it, the tone of him drums, the whole dancehall vibe, like just falling in love with them kind of music. Yeah. What do you think Dave Kelly brought to the dancehall scene in the 90s? Dancehall. He would build the rhythm, he write the songs, he mix the songs, he actually DJ some of the songs and people, you know. His voice is actually on some of them. We don't really get to find out. <laughs> In, in songwriting skills was way high of his time. Look into my eyes, tell me what you see. Can you feel my pain? Am I your enemy? Dave Kelly is a songwriter foremost. He's a prolific songwriter. At one point, he told me that he wanted to be a DJ, but he realized very quickly that he didn't have the voice. Kelly found a vehicle for his skills at Penthouse Records, later forming his own label Madhouse in 1991. We present on stage. It was no longer your sling things and your, your older rhythms. They were bringing a new, fresh nest. The steely and cleavies, the slide on bars, those are the people who were bringing this new age sound. Wayne, Dave, Bojo, Tony, Steely and Cleavy, all of them, it's like they were paying attention to the culture, the community. So they knew what the girls were saying in Carnation Market. They knew what the girls were saying in the dance. They knew what the, what, what the shutters were doing. They knew what quote-unquote new gun landed. They knew everything that was new wave, cutting edge, just happened to the point where Dave could they could release a song Thursday at Asylum. It was the biggest thing on Saturday and everybody was beside the radio on Saturday waiting for Colin Hines to play that record. Everybody walked down that stairs early Friday morning talking about that new Bones Killer that Dave Kelly just produced. Why did he matter so much for 90s dancehall? You know the formula? I don't think Dave Kelly ever put those on radio with flap. Him experimenting, trying new things, and it work. Imagine Showtime with him for the, the, the whole rhythm a year, one crowded night and make nice. Like, you, them now mix that way, they know, man. Them just want to do what they hear the person before them do, and, and them just a follow, follow each other. So everything sound the same. They can't say, yo, they have a rhythm or sound the same. Unless a bug and clone, and that was intentionally done, that's why I named clone. Because you do bug and it was so successful, you go clone and put some more song on it, and it shot again. Showtime of like 40 songs and the whole of them hit. You got any stage show now. Yo, give the artist the mic and run Showtime. Every man can just jump on every man DJ and bust the place the same way. But he also worked with some extraordinary names who were DJs at the time. People like Bounty Killer, people like Butcher Banton. Not really, you know. Say, so, working with extraordinary names, because they have actually built artists too. We we'll, we'll start with your artists that nobody knows of, and groom them and bring them and let them not start. 
when him take up Buju Buju wasn't an extraordinary name. Him just there, there and him just add him look greatness to it and then make Buju be this extraordinary name. You know, there's we know the same way as you say Frank is like um Ali Cat them. Only part is they work with man. Like when me never know and then when them actually I sing now that's so, so for me know them. So you're saying Dave Kelly built these people, of made course. these reputations? Of course. You can't take away my greatness. He helped to create the sound. Even Bounty Killer, Bounty Killer, he did it as a big artist, being a man, they were a big artist. But when Dave come into the picture, actually produce song for them, he, he bring them hopes up. He bring up them status and elevate them, them performance. All right, none of them 90s artists you can't go through one set. So them say, take out Dave Kelly and take out all of them songs that was produced by Dave Kelly. Them now the performance left. From the other days, like I play some boy, I play. That's why y'all lost your coat, my own man, I blow up my phone cause she want the vitamin A. Is there any other production name in dancehall music that looms as large as Dave Kelly's? Tony Kelly. Yeah, the Kelly brothers, man, man. Dave really dominate locally, you know. Tony Kelly have the most crossover dancer or something, you know. So Tony more go international, Dave. Yard. I remember those days when hell was my home when Dave didn't care. He didn't he was never about crossing over. He was always about keeping it real and authentic. He really wanted whatever he said to be a true and accurate representation of what was happening on the ground. And for you to cross over, because crossover at that time was a big a big thing. He had to marry that word with watering down. And he didn't like watering down. I, I remember when we were working on a lot of songs with Shaggy. Shaggy would be saying, that song can't play on the radio stations I want to be played on. And he's like, I don't care. And they'd got it. Because they was like, no, I'm keeping it real. I, uh, and he'd, they'd be, he'd really get upset. <laughs> Why do you think Dave Kelly never worked with Sean Paul? Um, rumor has it that he said he didn't rate him. Um, I don't know. I don't really follow rumors. But sometimes, to be honest with you, and this is my personal thought, Dave was really busy and Sean was really busy. And sometimes it was so hard for people to meet up and link up. Sometimes the business was even done. But Sean is still busy. Is Dave Kelly as busy? Um, yeah, so maybe we're on the other side now. Maybe Sean's too busy for Dave or Dave's too, who knows? But I'm, I'm saying it's not too late and I don't think there's any bad blood. They, I, don't, I think it can happen and I think, honestly, personally, I think we need some of that new old school in 2023. I mean a factory working, hustling on the side. What would you say Dave Kelly's biggest contribution to dancehall music was? Hits. Continuous hits. And you never met him? Never. Me tell him I can meet him, I just believe him, I tell him. I take one picture of him, even if he is not sure. I have to come to Charlie and show him. <laughs> if you were Dave Kelly, what would you do to shock people right now? To really sort of upend people's, turn up up some people's <laughs> assumptions about you? Turn, turn up on some face. <laughs> and if there's an award to collect, go on that stage and collect it. Oh my God, give a speech. Not gonna happen. Wilson well, Theory did me, man. I, it helped help me to try to make one sound for myself in our music, so. Big up yourself, sir, Dave. And lastly, I just think the real test of any song is time. It's because it's a time that cements the relevance. And he's so relevant. All of the parties that are happening, that are any form of successful, are 90s parties. Dave Kelly said to be honored at Reggae Sumfest with a 90s themed tribute, including, among others, Beanie Man and Bounty.